Welcome to another podcast from School of Surgery, where today we'll be talking about the basics of colorectal procedures. This podcast is aimed at undergraduate medical students or others interested in colorectal procedures, hoping to learn more about the basic anatomy, terminology and outcomes following these procedures. The learning outcomes of this podcast will be to learn more about the basic anatomy, introduction to key terminology, indications for the various colonic resections, common colonic resection operations and their outcomes. Essentially this podcast is aimed at those new healthcare professionals on their colorectal or surgical attachment faced by the myriad of phrases relating to the various colorectal procedures and need to have a more clear understanding of what each one involves. So starting with the anatomy. This is essential basic anatomy and probably more of an introduction to my diagrammatic representation of the colon rather than detailed anatomical concepts. Here we can see the cecum and the appendix attached, the ascending colon towards the hepatic fletcher just underneath the liver, the transverse colon which is usually very floppy, the splenic fletcher high up on the left hand side, the descending colon, the sigmoid named after its shape, followed by the rectum. Common operations so, starting from the ileocecal junction, work on our way round the colon to the rectum. We start with the right hemicolectomy, then the extended right hemicolectomy, left hemicolectomy, Hartman's procedure, anterior resection, subtotal colectomy, abdominoperineal excision of the rectum, or APER, sometimes known as abdominoperineal resection, and finally panproctocolectomy. We'll talk about each of these operations in turn. And by the end of the podcast, hopefully you should have a better idea of what's going on in each. When we talk about outcomes following these resections, we're not talking about surgical and patient outcomes. We're actually talking about the basic and anatomical outcomes. For example, whether or not the pieces of bowel are joined in a primary anastomosis at the time of the index operation, or if the proximal end of bowel is brought out as a stoma, And if this this is temporary, a subsequent anastomosis at a later date, restoring bowel continuity. Starting with the right hemicolectomy. Indications for this operation include benign, such as perforated cecum, secondary to nasty appendicitis, or malignant, such as cecal, ascending colon, hepatic fletcher, and sometimes transverse colonic cancers. So here the uh, cecum is perforated secondary to an inflamed appendix and we talk about our proximal division which here is the terminal ileum and the distal division which here is uh, part of the colon. As this is a non-oncological resection uh, we don't have to worry about resection margins such as uh, to do with lymphatic drainage and therefore we can make our divisions relatively close um, leaving as much bowel as possible. This is in contrast to where you have a malignancy effect in the the cecum or right colon where you have to be concerned about lymphatic drainage and having a proper oncological clearance. Therefore you compromise more of the blood supply. Proximal cut can still be uh, towards the distal ileum provided there's good blood supply but commonly you've affected uh, most of the blood supply to the right hemicolon and therefore your distal cut actually has to be quite far up from the cancer. The outcome following a right hemicolectomy, provided um, your anastomosis isn't compromised, is is usually a primary anastomosis. And here I've drawn a diagram representing um, a primary side-to-side anastomosis of that distal end of small bowel with the remaining uh, proximal end of colon. Left hemicolectomy is an operation most commonly performed uh, in the elective setting, commonly for cancer or diverticular disease and its complications. The outcome is usually a primary anastomosis. You can see here a malignancy effect in the left hemicolon, proximal cut made uh, proximal and distal distal all within the colon and following this we most commonly see a primary anastomosis. Hartman's procedure is a procedure most commonly performed in the emergency setting for any pathology affecting the sigmoid or recto-sigmoid colon. Uh, Common indications would be an obstructing cancer, perforation secondary to either cancer or diverticular disease, or diverticular complications. Here we can see a cancer effect in the sigmoid colon, and here diverticular disease effect in the sigmoid colon. These two pathologies, especially in the elderly population, can commonly present with either obstruction or perforation, leading to significant abdominal sepsis. 
And this would be the indication for our Hartmann's procedure. The proximal division is made in the colon, and the distal division is also made in the colon, resecting the diseased part of bowel. Now, due to the nature of the disease process, uh, as in the presence of a significant abdominal sepsis, uh, an inflammatory exudate around uh, the colon and within the pelvis, and also sometimes due to patient comorbidities, the need for uh, blood flow compromising agents such as noradrenaline to maintain blood pressure can mean that primary anastomosis would not be possible uh, due to the high risk of uh, subsequent anastomotic leakage. Therefore, the proximal end of bowel is usually brought out as part of a stoma. Um, that this is the uh, definition of a Hartmann's procedure. So here we can see the remaining stump of distal colon and the proximal end of colon, which is brought out as an end colostomy. Now, this uh, Hartmann's procedure resulting in an end colostomy is a reversible procedure. Uh, when the patient is optimised down the line, when they're fully healed, um, usually uh, the earliest is six months, they could be brought back to have a procedure where bowel continuity is restored. Um, therefore, uh, avoiding the need for a, a lifelong stoma bag. Anterior resection is an operation usually performed for malignancy in the elective setting. The cancer is affecting the upper end of the rectum, so lower down than uh, those affecting the left hemicolon we saw earlier or the sigmoid colon. And again, the proximal and distal division are made within the colon um, and you have enough of a rectal stump left uh, distal to the cut you've made uh, beyond the cancer, so that you can make a safe primary anastomosis, joining these bits of bowel back together. And what you see on the patient's abdomen is evidence of a well-healed midline laparotomy scar, unless, of course, it's been performed laparoscopically, which is more common these days. Um, if the surgeon does have any concerns regarding the primary anastomosis, at the time of the index procedure, they can form a loop ileostomy, and this gives the anastomosis a chance to heal, and a subsequent uh, waterball soluble contrast enema, demonstrating good integrity of that anastomosis, can mean the patient can have this loop ileostomy reversed uh, in the future, sometimes even as a day case procedure, uh, again avoiding the need for a permanent stoma. Now, subtotal colectomy is different from a total colectomy, which we'll come back to later. Subtotal colectomy indications include ulcerative colitis, synchronous cancers, which means those affecting more than one part of the bowel, ischemic colitis, or toxic megacolon, as seen sometimes in uh, significant C. diff colitis. What we mean when we say subtotal colectomy means removal of nearly all of the colon, proximally from the distal ileum and distally to the rectum, but it does leave a rectal stump. Here we can see uh, synchronous cancers affecting the ascending transverse and sigmoid colon. And here we have ulcerative colitis affecting uh, nearly all of the colon. Once the subtotal colectomy has been performed, in the first instance, usually due to the uh, nature of the disease such as ulcerative colitis, we don't form a primary anastomosis and we have an end ileostomy. Now following a subtotal colectomy it is possible to reverse uh, leading to um, a primary anastomosis and avoiding the need for a stoma bag. This is an operation called a J-pouch formation and would be common in those young patients who have had their colon removed for ulcerative colitis, they may be young and want to avoid a stoma for the rest of their life. And a simple diagram explaining this, you can see the rectal stump left behind and the distal end of small bowel. The surgeon brings this back on itself to increase its capacity and then joins it onto the rectal stump, fashioning um, a sort of pseudo-rectum where the aim is to have capacity and ultimately return faecal continence. It's not successful in all patients, however, in most it's an acceptable replacement for a permanent stoma. Next, we'll talk about the abdominoperineal excision of the rectum. Bit of a mouthful, so often uh, abbreviated as APER or APR. Now, this is uh, commonly an elective procedure performed for low down rectal cancers. Uh, this is different from the anterior resection I explained earlier, where the cancer was high enough up in the rectum to leave an adequate rectal stump allowing for primary anastomosis. In this case, the cancer is so far down, sometimes even affecting the anus, that for adequate uh, cancer clearance, you actually need to remove the whole of the anorectal compartment. 
The proximal division is made somewhere in the distal colon, however the distal division, as opposed to being in the colon, is performed outside of the abdominal cavity, uh, where all of the anus and, subsequent and surrounding skin is removed on block. Uh, this is then sewn together, leaving a sewn-up anal crease, and uh, as you can imagine, you need to have a permanent colostomy formed as an end colostomy. Therefore, uh, when you see the patient and examine them, you'll see evidence of previous surgical access, such as a midline laparotomy and uh, an end colostomy. We're nearly there, right down towards the bottom now, we have a panproctocolectomy. As the name suggests, this means removal of all of the rectum and colon. And indications for this procedure can again be synchronous cancers um, or indeed inflammatory bowel disease such as ulcerative colitis affecting the whole of the colon including the rectum. The proximal division is made at the distal ileum and the distal division is made as in a abdominal perineal resection uh, outside of the abdominal cavity removing the anus and uh, rectal compartment. And as you can imagine, once this has been performed, it's a necessity to have an end ileostomy, which is irreversible. So, that whistle-stop tour has taken us through uh, the basic anatomy, very basic if you remember, indications for various colonic resections, uh, covering the most common, and uh, indeed not all of them, and the common uh, operations performed within colorectal surgery, and the outcomes, uh, meaning primary anastomosis, stoma, whether that be temporary or permanent, and finally um, reversal procedures such as J-pouch formation. We hope you've enjoyed this brief summary of colorectal procedures. Remember that you can follow School of Surgery on Facebook by typing School of Surgery, on iTunes uh, via su subscribing to School of Surgery, and finally on schoolofsurgery.podomatic.com. Thank you very much.